Hey guys, welcome to the next video in our image processing series. Today we're going to be taking a look at the diff map function which compares two images. So let's get right on into that. All right, the first thing we can do here is go ahead and declare the diff map function in our .h file and that's going to take in an image reference and return an image reference. And then we can copy that over to CPP to make the definition for that function. And basically, the first thing we want to consider when we're writing this function is how much are we actually going to compare between these two images? Because they might be different sizes and they might have a different number of channels. So to solve that sort of issue, we are going to get the compare width, compare height, and compare channels, which is just the minimum of the two. And then we can just loop through all those. So once we have all those loops set up, we can go ahead and go inside here and access data. And we're going to get data by first getting the pixel, which is i times width plus j. And then the spe specific channel of that pixel can be accessed with this channel plus k. And then what we are going to set it to is the absolute value of the difference between data already at that pixel and data of the same pixel in the other image. So that's basically what I wrote right there. And then what we can do is actually bound this between 0 and 255 using this byte bound function, which I'm going to define right now. Uh, basically, I'm just going to make it a macro. And it's going to take in a value. And if that value is less than 0, what we can do is just set it equal to 0. And if it's greater than 255, we'll just set it equal to 255. All right, so that is pretty much it for the diff map function. We just need to return a reference to the object itself here. And we can go ahead and go back to main and start testing this. So I have these two images here. Um, one of them is a swirly, colorful image, and the other is just a picture of some lady standing. And we can go ahead and call the diff map function on these two. And let's see what we get here. So let's go ahead and run this. Uh, so it looks like I accidentally mistyped over here. Go ahead and put a zero right here. I had this minus sign. Um, so that should work now. Let's go ahead and run it. Looks like we generated those two images, or we read those two images, and it looks like we got the difference between them right here. Pretty busy image right there. Uh, looks like it did the job, though. So now I want to define a new diff map function. And this one is going to be called diff map scale, and it's going to take in an additional parameter called scale and it's going to be basically the same as the other diff map function except it's going to have the option to scale up the difference between the two images using that scale factor and that's just for ease of viewing because if the difference was really small then you wouldn't be able to see the difference so you might want to scale it up and to do that what we're going to do is as we're looping through we're going to keep track of the largest pixel value and we can just do that using fmax. And then at the end here, we can define this scale value again. And we're going to define that as 255 divided by this expression here. And let me just take a minute to explain this expression here. So the first thing I want to point out is um, the fmax of scale and largest. And that fmax is just because if they pass scale, to be lower than the largest pixel value, then that will kind of break this expression here. So we don't want to allow that, and I'll explain why that is in a minute. And then the second fmax between one and the other fmax is just to prevent them from passing a scale value that's zero or negative, or if we somehow get a negative or zero largest value, um, then we want to just divide by one and not divide by zero or a negative number. And then what this expression actually does is it takes the range between zero and scale or zero and largest and rescales it to be a range between zero and 255. So that's why we have to take the max of scale and largest is because if there is a pixel value that is larger than the scale value passed, then that value will actually get scaled over 255, which we don't want to allow. So this expression kind of prevents that. And then after we do that, we can just go ahead and loop through the rest of the pixels. And we can just multiply each of the pixel values by the scale factor. 
And one thing I forgot here is to make sure to set scale as a default argument because I don't actually want to make them pass a scale argument because they can always just leave it and it will default to scale up to the largest value. So now that that's done, we can go ahead and run this program. Um, if we go ahead and jump back over to main here, you'll see I've changed one of the pixels. Um, that might be kind of hard to see here. Um, yeah, that's pretty hard to see. So let me go ahead and change more pixels than that. We can just change some random pixels in a row by one. And normally in our old diff map function, if we just change them by one, there'd be no way to see that. Um, but hopefully with our new diff map function, we will be able to see it because this largest value should get scaled up to be uh, 255. So it should be a bright white pixel that you should be able to see here. So looks like that worked. Um, that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We should be coming out with the next couple episodes of our series soon. So stay tuned. Mm -hmm.